Hey everybody, it's Dr. Jensen with CCJ 3701 Research Methods in Criminology. So for many of you, this is the end of the line, one of the final classes in the major, and it's a four credit class, so it's busy. You've probably heard a lot of rumors about this class, and yes, they're all true. <laughs> um, no, I don't think they are, but I will say it is a challenging course. To me, it's one of the toughest courses in the major. I try to do everything I can to make it accessible to you, but it is a challenge and uh, I will give you tips and tricks in this video to try to give you the right approach and strategies to help you be successful in it. I've taught this course for many, 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 many years and I have taken my student feedback very seriously and I've interviewed a lot of students about their experience, so I have some good feedback to give you. But welcome to spring 2020. Um, I'm glad we're in a new semester and a new year. But let's go ahead and get started with this course. So I um, wanted to just give you a nice welcome to class and tell you what to expect. I'll tell you a little bit about me. We have no textbook for this class. So you're probably wondering why. It's because most of the material we use in class is open source or provided through articles and so forth. Um, or I wrote it. So you don't need a textbook for this class, but you do have required software that you will be using. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So we'll talk about class goals as well and what you will learn, my expectations of you and what you should expect from me, and then any others that will be involved in class and how to be successful. So um, this is me, sorry, kind of a fluffier picture of me. <laughs> um, but I got my PhD from the University of Oklahoma I have two master's degrees, one from Louisville and one from Southern Methodist University. Um, I also received my bachelor's degree from Southern Methodist University. And I previously taught at Brigham Young or BYU for over seven years as an associate professor. And uh, my highest rated course was this one, Social Statistics and Research Methods. So it was kind of a funny situation. We basically had um, a required course exactly like this in the last university I was at. And this is the course that brought me to University of Florida. This is why I was hired, because this was the hardest course in the major at that university as well, but that's where I got my highest teaching evaluations. And so I hopefully was doing something right. Um, I had a passion for it. I tried to be as helpful as I could to my students, and it seemed like it was working really well. Um, this class has a very high pass rate, so please don't freak out. Um, occasionally, students do struggle, um, and I have to see them again in the future they have to retake the course uh, but no worries if you find that that is you this semester don't worry about it i never hang on to that stuff or grudges i never ask what went wrong or what happened in a previous semester it's really none of my business and some things just are out of people's control and they just couldn't give the course the attention or the detail that it needed or you know 20 other things and that's okay so uh, anyway, that's a little bit of my background. Um, but again, I don't hold that against people. Sometimes people just need to see content twice to really kind of get it. And statistics is sometimes one of those things. And that's pretty normal and pretty common. So I'm like you, I've actually finished an online degree. 100% um, online, it took me three years, but this was a master's degree that I did after my PhD because I'm a nerd and <laughs> I go to school forever. But uh, I've been on the other side of the keyboard, so I know what it's like. And some of you in this class have had other classes from me. And uh, you know that you have a lot of access to me. And that is because in this degree at University of Louisville, I had a lot of access to my faculty. And I really appreciated getting to call them and talk to them on the phone. So last semester, I experimented with text messaging my students back and forth. And it actually worked out really well. So I'm open to that if you wanna do that. I'd even have students working um, on their statistics and they would take little screenshots with their phone and they would actually send me those images and I could look at them and actually read their output and see if it was correct. And it was kind of convenient for both of us. But anyway, we'll try it again this semester. We'll see if, how that works. Um, I, I'm not a help desk, so I can't be available 24 hours a day, but um, that might be a way we can do this. Um, but having that access to faculty, I think, is really important. So I actually have a Google Voice number that is specifically for my students, and I dedicate it to you guys. So it forwards directly to my cell phone, and that gives you access to me. Because sometimes, in especially a class like this, you need some real-time feedback and troubleshooting. Maybe you're 
working through some data or you're trying to code a variable or you're stuck on an answer and you don't know how you got stuck, it's like a math class and you just have to talk to someone about it and work through the problem. So that's why I have it. Um, where I work, practiced and partnered. If you've had classes with me, you know I draw from a lot of different experiences in probation, prison, policing, juvenile justice, so many areas that I've worked and practiced and partnered either through grants or you know, lots of other opportunities. So I have a pretty good um, command on a lot of different areas if you want to talk about careers or advising or those kind of things. But let's keep moving forward so that I can give you some help with how to prepare for this class. So again, there is no textbook. It's hands-on learning. I do have readings from time to time that you will want to do. It's kind of easy to go, I'm just going to go watch all the videos and call it good. No, do the reading too. I don't ask a lot of reading in the class, but the reading is going to help you be more successful in your assignments and labs because you're going to know where to look. Okay. Um, so materials are mostly from articles and best practices. Um, I teach this class in an applied manner as if you were getting training for your job. So treat this class kind of like a workshop. That is exactly how it is. So I have step-by-step -step, hands on videos that walk you through every single menu on the screen that take you through every step. And I, you know, I have a hundred videos in this class, just this class alone, 100 videos. Most of those videos are software, you know, taking you through techniques, commands, menus on a lab. So, uh, and other videos actually show you how to do statistical interpretation, how to read output, um, and give you strategies on how to make decisions about data. So the people that get A's in this class, honestly, have watched all 100 videos. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of daunting, but most of these videos are under eight minutes. In fact, a good chunk of them are under four minutes. So really, that's not a lot of time when you think about four credit hours of instruction every week for 16 weeks. It's actually not that bad. Um, the strategy that you guys get that the in-class students do not get when they take this class on campus is you have the luxury of pausing me, fast forwarding me, rewinding me, or watching the video again if you missed a step. Um, if you were doing this lab in real time with a teaching assistant or a classmate, you might not have that luxury. So that is kind of nice to be able to go back and watch things because sometimes people go, oh, um, I need to build a scale with five variables. And I know Jensen had a video on that. I need to go find it and just do a refresher so that I remember the steps I need to do to go build that variable. It's stuff like that. So it's really convenient to have kind of a catalog of videos to work with in the class. And um, I give you guys paper templates. I give you guys table templates lots and lots of resources so that you can look at things and see how they're formatted or drop in your stuff um, in the appropriate way to try to maximize the credit that you get and get it right the first time. Um, we don't have any discussion boards, but we will have regular group communication. Um, so I send out a lot of Canvas announcements about this class. This class probably has the most announcements and I often will send short tips and tricks, especially in our software, SPSS that are really worth reading and paying attention to. So act like these would be things you need to hear from me in class. Due dates, help, um, things that will make your time spent on a lab or a project a lot shorter. So um, be on the lookout for those, so check those often. Our class goals is number one, to get you comfortable using SPSS. Now, most of you have had this software before, and SPSS actually is an IBM product. It's software called Statistical Package for the Social Sciences, SPSS. It's been around forever, since the 1980s, and there are plenty of other statistical packages out there like Stata or eViews or SAS. There's a lot of them, and some people do stats through Microsoft Excel. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do statistics, but SPSS is kind of the the common one that you find in government and industry and it's one that a lot of people know but certainly there are others out there and why when, when i teach people i tell them you learn one statistical package you can usually learn another one pretty easily they're very similar um, 
but I also want you to practice the basics of social research, especially as they pertain to studying crime. These are skills that you can take with you into the workforce. So everybody needs, how to needs to learn how to manage data. They need to learn how to answer basic questions that they might get from a supervisor or a client or a customer. Um, analyze the patterns and make decisions with the things they learn from that analysis. Every job I can think of needs to be able to do those things. And those are skills you're going to have in this class. In my opinion, this is one of the most important classes you're going to take in the major because it is a skill-based class. And I actually show you in module 14 at the very end of the class how to put these skills on your resume. So you can actually put this software package in software that you know and you can put some of the statistical techniques on there as well. And I've seen students get jobs, like six figure jobs, because they have these kinds of skills, making good money um, and doing really cool stuff. So to me, that's one of the reasons why this class is really important. It's skill-based and um, it directly relates to the world of work rather than just the study of crime. Um, and at the end of the class, you're going to bring all your skills together into a research paper report. Uh, the students that take this class on campus have to do the same thing. So this class is 100% equivalent to what students are doing in Gainesville on campus. So yeah, that's part of what makes it challenging is we have to make sure everyone is tasked the same way. So everybody writes a big paper at the end of this class, which is why you don't have any exams or quizzes along the way. <laughs> Um, my expectations of you are you do need to use the SPSS software. That is required for class. I will show you how to access that shortly. Um, please be patient with me, pardon our dust. I always tinker with my classes and change things a little bit. I'm considering replacing a few labs with some new, um, new exercises that I think would be a little bit um, better at letting you practice some skills. So, um, just keep that in mind. I try to make sure I announce those well in advance and give you plenty of time to do them and I don't penalize you for something I didn't give you. So um, just keep your eyes out for that and on the announcements. Be really hands-on and active. Um, one strategy that people do when they take this class is they'll often have a smartphone next to their laptop or maybe a, a tablet or an iPad or, you know, or a, a dual screen. And they'll often play my video of how to do the steps in a lab. And then they'll have their assignment or their lab open at the same time. So they can kind of hear me narrating the steps and they can be working on those steps on their screen simultaneously. So that is a really good strategy is you may want to either get dual monitors for this class, or if you don't want to go out and buy all this hardware, you could certainly put me on some kind of tablet device or even on your smartphone and just play it a video of me and that would be helpful too. So if you kind of put the two side by side, you can pause me and you can kind of work actively in the lab. This class has eight labs and we do them during the first eight weeks of class. And then after that, we are shifting into paper production and you actually write your paper as you go. So you do each section, one section at a time. So basically by about week 14, you have an 85, 90% written paper. And at the very end of, of that week, you should just be editing and finishing up and putting all the final touches on your paper. Each of those sections, I give you tons of feedback and we work on problem areas that you have. Um, so I always appreciated professors that let me kind of turn in parts of a paper as I go because it helped me discipline myself and getting the darn thing done and also gave me a chance to score higher because I would get feedback along the way. Um, it's a lot easier to score a paper that's been well worked on and drafted um, than one that just comes together the night before. And on that note, I will tell you right now, this paper is about 20 to 25 pages with original data analysis, tables, statistics, and interpretation. This is not a paper that can be written the night before. I've never ever seen it done and I've scored approximately a thousand papers at this point in time. A thousand papers at 25 pages a piece, that's a lot of reading. And so I've taught this class for, wow, 11 years now. And uh, all my students from those 11 years will tell you that. Do not try to write this paper the day before. It will never happen. This is a paper that's probably one of the biggest papers you've ever written for a college class. And 
deservedly so. It requires a lot of attention, a lot of discipline, and a lot of drafting. So just make sure you spend time on it accordingly. Um, communicate often and early for help. I, it's hard to help you after the fact. So um, try to build in some communication time if you need more regular feedback from me. And again, you can call me and, and text. It is a four credit class, so make sure it has the adequate space in your schedule. And I tell people, set aside a dedicated day and time to do this class. Like every Saturday morning you work on it, or maybe your Thursday lunch break. If you let your week dictate when this class gets worked on, you're not gonna do very well. People will spend at least 12 to 16 hours a week on this class. I've had many students tell me that sometimes they can spend up to 20 hours a week, depending on what skill they're working on and how challenging it is. So keep that in mind. It is a heavier class as far as the workload. And you may find yourself watching videos over and over and spending a lot of time on labs and projects. So um, keep that in mind as you set your time aside. Um, this course also meets the University of Florida Gordon Rule, which is the state of Florida legislature saying you must write 24,000 words of research and writing in order to be a college student and a Gator, or basically any graduate of any Florida university has to meet that requirement. And this class blows through that easily. <laughs> so it will also meet your writing requirement on your degree audit. Okay, so for me, this class is the priority class for me. Now, some of you have had other classes that I've taught as well, and you kind of know this. Um, this class takes up a lot of my time, and so I try to get to everyone as best I can, but this class is the priority because it's kind of the gatekeeper class for getting the degree, and it's required for the major. The other classes I teach are electives, so I try to give you guys most of my time and attention because you need it. Um, I usually have graduate teaching assistants available to help, I've not been assigned to those assistants this semester, so it's most likely just going to be me, and that's fine, but if that changes, I will let you know. So again, I'm available for phone calls, that Google Voice number that's on my signature. I do have virtual office hours every morning from 9 to noon. So that means I'm usually at my keyboard, available on my phone, or through Canvas or, or email, and we can reach each other pretty easily electronically or through virtual means. Um, I have in-person office hours in Gainesville on Mondays. So um, if you want to meet in person, we can, but you'll want to reach out and make an appointment so that I don't miss you because I do have faculty meetings and stuff that day as well. Um, I want to provide you reassurance when you make mistakes. Don't take grades personally. Some people do horrible on the labs, but then they go back and they maybe try them a second time. And uh, I don't give you credit for a second attempt, but they just want the skill. They're like, I just want to know what I did wrong. So they'll go rework the assignment and then they'll do a lot better and they'll end up acing the paper. And it's so funny that happens um, quite a bit where students maybe are struggling with the skills, but suddenly after they practice them a little bit more and give things a little more time, things just start clicking and coming together and they're doing awesome now. And where it really counts is that final paper. That's a thousand points. So it's a, a little over 60% of your grade is that paper. All the rest of your grade are the assignments, the labs, and the paper projects. But yeah, most of your grade comes from this paper. And those assignments, labs, and paper projects are there to build your skills and your sections of your paper. So they kind of contribute to each other. Um, let's see, here's how we access the software for class. So again, SPSS is Statistical Package for the Social Sciences, and uh, you can use the free version on apps.ufl.edu. You just sign in with your Gator link ID and password. You have to click through a few uh, server and Citrix receiver messages that let you host the software on a virtual desktop in its own window. So I give you a lot of tips on how to work in that environment that will be helpful to you. Some people prefer to just download their own copy to their hard drive of this package. It's actually pretty affordable and I'll show you how to do that too. But you are certainly welcome to use the free version of SPSS at apps.ufl.edu. It is paid for by your student fees. So you've kind of already paid for it once. Um, but let me show you how to go get the second software. So this is the website. It's called onthehub.com if you would like to buy your own license. Again, this is optional, but I wanted to take just a few moments to show you what you would expect if you go there. So on the website here, 
if you type in onthehub.com, um, you'll see one of their big sellers is IBM SPSS statistics. Version 24, 25, or 26 will do. So which, whatever the latest version is, get that one. So if you click on SPSS or you search for it, you should find it here. And then once you're on the page, sorry, little funny pop-up, it'll ask you, do you want to use it for uh, Windows or Mac? I'm actually a Mac user, but I've used this program on both and it works just fine. Okay, so you choose whatever you're going to use, Windows or Mac, okay, and then you select which license to get. So I tell people you want the standard grad pack, okay? So either get the six month or 12 month rental of the standard grad pack. Do not get the base grad pack. That will not provide you enough menu functions for what we need to do in class. That's the basic level of the software. We use the more advanced level. So uh, use the SPSS statistics standard grad pack. And again, um, six months is perfectly fine. That would cover our whole semester. If you are planning on doing a senior thesis in the near future, you might want to get the 12 month um, if you're doing it right after this class, because then you would have access to the software you need for doing that thesis assignment. And you're probably gonna be doing research that needs SPSS anyway. So then you kind of buy it one time for two classes. If you wanna talk more about that, we can, and I can show you more there. But essentially, um, you add it to your cart. Oh, it says, hey, you're a Mac user. Yeah, I know I'm a Mac user. So it even checks you. Do you have the right operating system? Yes. Um, you add it to your cart. It's going to basically prompt you to sign in and register. You will need to use an, a .edu email address. So use your UF email to purchase this software. The reason I say that is because this is an educational vendor and it provides this software to you at a discount because you are a student at a college or university. And so the way they verify that is if you have a .edu email address. So use that University of Florida email to do your purchasing and add it to your cart and it'll prompt you through the download process um, and give you a license key to license your software but you have to use your university email to do it. Otherwise you can't get the discount and you can't finish the purchase. So those are just some ways to actually go ahead and download that. They also sell other software, right? You know, that are kind of specialized software, et cetera. So we'll just go ahead and wrap up here, but essentially that is how to get the software. Um, most of the labs that I do are through the apps.ufl.edu free software. So again, perfectly fine to use that. And yes, I don't assume that you remember anything from your statistics class. <laughs> Some people, it was a long time ago that they had anything on research or anything on statistics. And if they did have that class, they hated it <laughs> and don't remember a thing and kind of just got through it. Well, we do a ton of review in this class. I don't assume you remember a thing. <laughs> so we will review a lot. Uh, treat this like a capstone class. It very much is. And again, the end of your major for most of you. Um, keep a data log. So I ask people to go buy like a spiral bound notebook that they can kind of jot stuff down in as they're working on coding and as they're working through variable names and labels. You, there's stuff you have to jot down and there's just too many pieces for you to try to keep track of all of them electronically even in a Word document. M clicking through multiple screens and windows can be really frustrating because you'll have an SPSS data processor window, you'll have an output window, you'll have um, a syntax editor, you'll have me talking to you on a screen, you'll have Canvas open for your lab to put all your answers in. That's five windows right there. That doesn't even include a Word document of all your notes. So if you don't wanna navigate six windows or you think you might lose track of things, just grab a spiral bound notebook and jot stuff down. Um, I will tell you, Nine times out of 10, students have said, yeah, you need some scratch paper or you need a spiral bound notebook just to keep track of your stuff. And it's not stuff that you have to really hang on to a lot, but you might be working on different variables or different data, different stats on different days, and you have to keep track of where you are because you might work on it for a little bit today and then not get back to it until Wednesday and you gotta go, wait, where did I leave off? The other thing that's really nice about this class is you can, um, complete the lab as you go. So you can start an attempt in Canvas and put all your answers in there 
and then you can walk away or navigate away and canvas most of the time saves your work and you can re-enter the lab you can even close the window or the tab and it'll show you what you've done so far so you don't have to do everything in one sitting you can come back to it later if you would like and finish your attempt because they are untimed it'll save what you've completed um, however, that being said, some people find it easier to just kind of go through all the motions start to finish. The labs are supposed to be approximately an hour, and it may be easier to keep track of the steps and the learning if you just set aside an hour to work on the labs. Um, but I know sometimes you don't have a whole hour and you might have to do a half hour here, a half hour there, and that's okay too. Um, make sure you, again, you dedicate time each week to this class. Um, I can't stress that enough when people start failing the class or struggling it's because their time is disappearing and they're letting their week dictate the class rather than them dictating their week and it is hard if you start to get behind in this class it is incredibly difficult to catch up you can work ahead if you know you're going to be gone and some people have conferences business trips visits family stuff that they know is coming and you can anticipate in advance and try to get ahead where you can, it is possible to do that. And every, every module is available now and you can work ahead if you want to. Um, but uh, when I see students struggle, it's because they're getting behind. This class is highly sequenced. So each lab builds on the next one and the one prior. They're kind of all stacked like that so that we kind of work in that order. So in the first parts of the class, I'm walking you through every single skill. In the later parts of the class, I'll just say things in the videos like, run a frequency, or go check the variable label, or let's go look at the mean, median, and mode. And I'm not gonna tell you what menu it's in because by week seven, you should know how to do that by now. But if you find that you're, you can't remember where that stuff is, um, then you may need to go back and redo some of those labs so that you remember. But again, I build and build and build, so if you miss a week, make sure you go back and do it because you're going to be lost the next week. Um, make sure you install or obtain your software early. Go into apps.ufl.edu. Make sure you can open SPSS or go buy your software if you choose to buy it. Get that done now <laughs> because we're going to plunge right in. Use really good file storage habits um, and naming conventions. You're going to use save as a lot in this class. So you're going to save output, you're going to save data, you're going to save syntax and variables and all kinds of stuff. So I give you some suggestions on how to use the M drive at UF to save the stuff you're working on on apps.ufl.edu. But you can also save stuff to your hard drive, have a folder for this class, have a folder for your projects, folders for labs. It will keep you very organized. Um, be really honest about what works and what doesn't and reach out. I can code variables with you together on the phone. I can work on labs with you together on the phone. And I'm happy to do that. We just have to make sure we get that scheduled um, in advance because um, I can't be like a help desk, again, 24 hours a day, but I can be available in the evenings and on the weekends. I've done that for my students many, many times and I'm happy to do that for you. So that's about it. Um, one other thing I'll recommend is get a printout of the semester schedule and write down each week, kind of week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, week six, because it's going to help you keep track of what we're on. I send out regular weekly emails just to kind of give you your to-do list for the week, but this really, really helps. So go grab the UF academic calendar for spring 2020. Write this down. I can tell you right now, your final paper is due on April 26th. So now you know from day one of class, your paper is due on the Sunday of finals week, April 26th. And I try to grade these as fast as I can so that you know whether you're graduating or not, okay? <laughs> or if you're gonna retake the class. Again, I know this is nerve wracking. It's a high stakes class and uh, I just wanna make this as easy for you as I can. So please don't be nervous. Take your time, be patient with yourself. Data, stats, and research is messy. You're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna mess up, but it's how we learn. I can't tell you how many times I've recoded a variable wrong and I go, oh, 
why did I do that? And then I go back and I see something funny and I go, oh, okay, I need to start over. That's okay. It's not a big deal. Data can't hurt you. It can spend your time, but it can't hurt you. So I look forward to a great semester together. And uh, this class actually is a little bit smaller than fall semester. So I should be even more available to you um, than, uh, than, than in previous semesters because uh, our enrollment's a little bit smaller. So again, reach out and best of luck. Bye-bye.